Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the DA Form 2399, uh, otherwise known as the computer's record. All right. Um, first and foremost, this supersedes the DO, DA Form 2399 TAC Romeo, um, which is the computer's record from the previous TC dated February 2005. All right. So if you've never seen this one before, um, I highly suggest you start digging into the TC, you can find it in the TC 3TAC 22.91, um, chapter two, I believe it's two TAC six, uh, very top starts talking about the computer's record. All right, um, some, some big differences um, from what you'll see between the TAC Romeo and this one. First and foremost is, on the old one, used to have method of control and methods, message to observer up at the top. Um, this one, for whatever reason, they get, decided to take it out. And then the old one did not have max order time of flight and the mark time. It was just one solid rounds expended block. Um, some, some small things down at the bottom. It only had deflection and not azimuth. Uh, let's see. And the charge used to be a range slash charge box. All right, so that's really your, your biggest things that you'll see um, in the difference between the 2005 February computer's record and the new updated 2017 DA form. All right, uh, there's really three things that this document is used for. Uh, the first being recording all of the FOs, call for fire, and the corrections, all right? And I'll, I'll dive into it a little bit, but that's going to be the meat and potatoes and this top portion here across your computer's record, all right? Uh, you're recording your firing data, all right? So that's going to make up this middle portion and this bottom portion as well as it records the commands to the mortars during a fire mission. All right, so starts with your FDC order, which derives and makes up your initial fire command. And that initial fire command is what gets relayed to the guns. All right, so first and foremost, diving into this, you have the top left corner of your organization. All right, so that is you as the firing unit Whatever your unit is, you can go ahead and throw that into your organization. The date is at which time you received that call for fire from your Ford Observer, and the time. So same thing, your, your date and your time coincide with when you receive that call for fire from your Observer. All right, and then the target number at that top right that's simply just the target number that gets associated with whatever fire mission that you're running. All right. I might have skipped over the observer ID. So the observer ID is just the call sign of the observer. All right, so if you move your way down just below organization, uh, you have three boxes. You have your just fire, your fire for effect, and your immediate suppression. All right, so anytime you get just a standard adjust fire mission, you're going to check or put an X in that adjust fire block. All right, same thing for fire for effect or immediate suppression or immediate smoke. You're going to put an X or check in that box. All right, so say I get a fire for effect grid all i'd simply do is check fire for effect box label my grid in the grid line so you have your ot direction if given from the fo goes in this line and then your altitude of the target all right so say i get a shift mission or a polar mission i'm still going to come over here and check in my adjust fire box, and then I will move into my respective 
box for whatever mission I'm running. So if it's a, a shift from, I would put the target number I'm shifting from here, the direction, so the OT direction in which the observer sees the target here, so his azimuth, an altitude, if we have one, if he doesn't provide one, then it's going to be the same altitude as the target you're shifting from. And then whatever corrections he's giving from that target you're shifting from. All right, so if it's a, a left correction, you check the left box. If it's a right correction, you check the right box. Same thing with add or drop. If you're dealing with range, then you have your vertical interval corrections or up or down goes in that third line. Same for polar. So if you receive a polar mission, you're still going to the far left, checking that adjust fire box, and then moving to the far right and filling out the data you received from the FO for that polar mission. So the direction and distance from him to the target, his OT direction, or simply just his azimuth, the altitude of that target, if it's not stated, you technically can go from the FO's altitude, the vertical interval. So that's just whether there's a, a vertical interval correction that he decides to apply to this, so the up or down. And then moving into your target description. All right, so this target description is whatever the FO gives you in his call for fire. So simply you have your warning order, your target location, depending on what kind of mission he gives you, and then it moves into your target description. All right, so it, it follows the six elements fairly well um, to help out in the process of filling this document. So the big thing with the target description, you're usually trying to get the type of target it is, like a nomenclature, um, how big it is, your size, um, a quantity. So if it's more than one vehicle, how many vehicles are you looking at? Roughly how many troops are out there? And then if it has any type of protection. All right, and that just gives the FDC a better idea on the proper round type that they can use to prosecute this target. All right, and then right, right below the target descriptions or method of engagement. All right, so that's the type of adjustments and ammunition in this field. Remember, call for fire is the request, so he can request specific rounds um, if you're able to actually prosecute that target with those rounds and absolutely go ahead. But if you're not, um, when you get into your FTC order, then you'll have to adjust that accordingly. All right, and then like I said, on the TAC Romeo DA form from 2005, um, it had your method of control and your message to observer here. Um, you'll see it a lot depending on where you are or where you go, you can still go ahead and put the information you need for your message to observer and stuff in that box. It's just kind of a hidden movement that we do now that they went ahead and removed it. All right, so diving into the FTC order. The mortar to fire for effect is whatever you see fit as the FTC chief or the section, section sergeant. Uh, to prosecute this target. All right, so if you don't need the entire section, um, you can put specific guns there. It's just based on the target that you're engaging. All right, but all that is is the, the number of guns that you need to prosecute those targets. So say I have section, I'm just going to write in there SEC, shorthand for section. All right, mortar to adjust, that's whatever you have as your adjusting piece, your base piece. 
typically it's gun two or two gun but say you're firing a illumination mission and you just have one gun then you can go ahead and put one gun as your mortar to adjust or four gun it doesn't really matter your method of adjust so if you if you don't have a mortar to adjust you don't have a method to adjust all right so you can skip those if you are just doing for example a fire for effect and you just have mortar to fire for effect if you don't have basis for correction, then you just move to shell and fuse. All right, but if I do have a mortar to adjust, I, I will have a method of adjust, and that simply is just the number of rounds that that adjusting gun is going to use each time he's adjusting. All right, your basis for correction. So if you have a registration point, if you have met data, and you're utilizing that for that mission, then you're going to go ahead and put whatever it is that you're, you're using to correct from. All right, so if I have RP1 for my registration point, I'm going to go ahead and put RP1 for my basis for correction. If, I have, if I'm using current MET data, then I would go ahead and put CM for current MET. All right, shell and fuse. So this is going to be a combination for the entirety of the mission. All right, so if the observer requested a specific round in the adjust and then a different round for your fire for effect, then you would go ahead and label it differently on each line of your shell and fuse. All right, so typically what you're going to see is the rounds, the shell and fuse that you're using on this top line in the adjust phase. All right, and that would simply just be one round HE, I slash A, so in the adjust, and then your fire for effect rounds down here. So whatever it might be, if you're firing something different than what's in the adjust, then you need to annotate accordingly. All right, so if it's three rounds white phosphorus in the fire for effect, then you would go ahead and note that change of ammunition there. All right, so your method of fire for effect, so how many volleys? Pretty simple there for the fire for effect. Your time of opening fire, so whether this is when ready at my command, time on target, um, you're just going to write it in that line and then you see here you have your method of control types. Depending on what you have, you can go ahead and check the box to the right of whatever method of control you're utilizing. All right, your initial chart data. So when dealing with the M16 plotting board, all right, I know in my class, one of the previous videos, I was talking about thinking of the plotting board as a chart so any any data any initial data that you pull off your plotting board is going to come in this initial chart data portion all right so the initial chart deflection that i got from my board now if i'm utilizing like i was saying earlier um, my registration corrections right if I have a deflection correction, all I'm going to do is annotate whether it was left or right, and then put the number next to whatever letter coincides. All right, so how I'm going to apply that is take my initial chart deflection here, apply that deflection correction, and then my new deflection that sum will go here to be the command deflection that you receive or that you give to the, uh, the gun line, all right? All right, so your range line here, that's your initial chart range pulled straight from the board itself. Your VI and altitude corrections. 
So your vertical interval, the difference between the target and your mortar firing position, or the difference between the target that you're shifting from if you're running a shift mission is going to be that target you're shifting from, the difference between that and the mortar fire position, and then a puller, your vertical interval will be the difference between the observer and your mortar fire position. All right, divide that by two, and that becomes your altitude correction. All right, so your vertical interval, whatever that sum, that difference is, divided by two becomes your altitude correction. So if I'm at my mortar firing position and my target is above me, I'm going up in range, I'm adding range, my altitude correction is going to be a positive. If my target is below me, I'm dropping range, I'm decreasing range, my altitude correction is going to be a negative. All right, so I would check whatever box applies, write in my vertical interval and my altitude correction there and then I'm going to apply my altitude correction from my initial chart range to get my command range at that box all right we only apply our vertical interval if it is greater than 50 all right so if you have a vertical interval less than 50 then you're not going to divide that by two to obtain your altitude correction, all right? It, it does not matter if it's less than 50. All right, range corrections, simply put from registration. Uh, when I get into the registration class, I'll talk more into how to apply that into your command range to your TRC. All right, so your charge, it's whatever charge, the lowest charge, like I was saying in my previous video, the lowest charge possible um, to affect that target based off of the command range that you have. All right, so when you enter that TFT, lowest charge based off that command range to get that charge. And then you can go ahead and drag that over to your initial fire command. Uh, your azimuth. So if I'm using a plotting board and I have my direction of fire correction, my deflection indexed, I read the opposite way, I'm going to annotate that azimuth I have on my plotting board as well. All right. If I'm using a computer, an LHNBC or MFCS, I can annotate my aiming point azimuth on the azimuth azimuth line based off of my safety tab then angle T all right so remember pennies dimes dollars so I determined it to the nearest one I recorded it to the nearest 10 so my nearest 10 would go here and then I'm going to pass that back to the FO to the nearest 100 so like I was saying earlier, the MTO used to be here. So I'd annotate if angle T is in effect in that line up top. All right, so moving into my initial fire command. A lot of this is just data that you're pulling from your FTC order. All right, so my mortar to follow is going to be whatever I had as my mortar to fire for effect. My shell and fuse is the same shell and fuse that I had in my FTC order. My mortar to fire is my mortar to adjust. My method of fire is what I had. So I'm essentially all I'm going to do is take my method of adjustment and my sh method of fire for effect with my shell and fuse and make it into one. All right, so it'd be one round HE and adjust, three rounds in the effect. Just an example. My deflection pulled from my initial chart data. Same thing with my 
charge and then my elevation is whatever I obtained from my tabular firing table based off of my command range and my charge. All right. Time setting, if it applies, you'll put it in that line. And your rounds ex expended, this top portion is the rounds expended for this initial portion here. So if it's just adjusting, it's going to be one round and you can circle it. And that lets you know once that number is circled that that round has been sent downrange. All right, your max ord is annotated in your maximum ordinance box here your time of flight your tof is going to be put in that box there and your mark time which i will talk about later on but if you have a mark time you can annotate it there all right so going to the bottom portion of your computer's record the bottom left you have observer corrections all right so this here is anything that you received after you fired this initial adjustment round. You're going to move down here and start applying any observer corrections that they send you. All right. So your deviation corrections, that DEV, that's your left or right in meters set from the FO. All right. So if he gives a left 100, you can just write L100. That's just your left or right corrections. Your range. All right, that's your add or drop in meters set from the FO. So you can either put an A or D or a positive and a minus symbol. Move into your chart and safety data. So on the, the previous computer's record, it just had your chart data. Uh, I think the intention here was to make this better utilized across the board, not just with plotting boards, but with computers. So when you're using a, a plotting board, the chart data that you pulled based off of this correction is going to go in here as your deflection and then that chart range that you got. So your chart deflection and chart range based off of the corrections that you applied will go here for the plotting board. If you're using a computer, the safety data that you pull, so if you can go into your safety tab, you can pull your safety range and you can put it in there if you so choose to. All right, going into your subsequent commands, your mortar to fire. So if I started with my adjusting gun shooting and they're still adjusting, I don't have to annotate anything for my mortar of fire and method of fire. All right, so if my method of engagement does not change, do not waste your time filling out the information on your computer's record. All right, leave it blank. If your method of engagement changes from, let's say, two gun to section, then you're going to annotate it. All right, if it does not change, do not annotate. So say I changed, I got a, a left five zero fire for effect. I would just put positive or sorry, L five zero FFE and then change this to section, my method of fire, whatever my method of fire for effect was. And then my deflection for my subsequent commands. So if I had a deflection correction up here, you can go ahead and bring that deflection correction down here. That way you know, once I receive my chart deflection, I need to apply that still to any follow-on deflections for my subsequent commands. All right. So that's simply just your chart deflection with the correction applied. All right, your charge. So going back to the, the old DA form, it had the charge and range box there. Um, you could still put that in there. Um, you just need to know that you can go ahead and still put both in that charge box. So that's your command range with any corrections applied from your initial chart range 
or your safety range. Did your your time, so it's your, your time setting, your fuse setting, if you're using those specific rounds. And then the elevation that coincides with your command range. All right. And then this far right box is just your rounds expended, carried on. All right, so if I'm still adjusting, you can do a running round count, put a two in there, circle it, fire for effect, total round counts, send it down range, and then circle it. All right, down at the very bottom, you have your BDA, your battle damage assessment. So depending on what the observer gives you, if he just says end of mission, you can just write EOM at the bottom of your computer's record, and then you can give your BDA, write it down there verbatim on how you received it from your FO. And then your aim point grid goes into computers, which I'll try to touch on a little bit, but simply that's just your final aim and point grid that the computer received at your end of mission. When you pull up your end of mission tab, you can go ahead and annotate that in the bottom right portion of your computer's record. All right, so in a nutshell, that's everything that you can fill out on your DA form 2399, your computer's record. Once I dive into more of these advanced missions, I'll talk more specifically on what needs to be in there for each mission. But in a nutshell, that's everything you need to know for the computer record. All right. If I have any questions, like always, please reach out to me. Um, either comment on the YouTube channel or on the Instagram.